I'm Jake Lutz, and I'm a first lieutenant here at the Air Force Research Laboratory on Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is my lovely wife, Danae Lutz. Today we're going to be working on a LEGO model of Navigation Technology Satellite 3, also known as NTS-3. It's an advanced GPS technology prototype satellite that we're developing here at the Air Force Research Lab. These are the solar arrays, so these will go off of the model. And I'm working on the central part of the solar array. We call it the solar array spine. We've got a layout here of how it goes, sort of in like in an exploded view. And I'm just following those like I would follow normal LEGO instructions. Two years is how long I've been at AFRL, and I've been working on NTS-3 ever since I got here. It's not always the case that when an Air Force officer graduates from college that they're able to actually use their degree and the job that they get right out of college. And so I was super stoked that I was able to come to the Air Force Research Lab and use the skills that I had honed over the last four years. The first time I built a model of NTS-3 for conference displays, I 3D printed it and I used a lot of cut metal on it and I, I made something, I tried to make it look as realistic as possible. When I wanted to, to make a replacement for it, something that was a little bit bigger, I wanted to make something that was a little bit more engaging, a little bit more interactive, I thought that Lego would be a good medium for that because a lot of engineers and scientists played with Lego as a kid. Maybe it even inspired them to, to enter the STEM field and, and do some engineering and whatnot. I thought that a toy would just engage people that come by our booth in a way that other displays might not. But it is an accurate representation of the NTS-3 satellite. You can actually point out basically every single major component. So we've got the phased array, which you'll see later with the completed model. We've got the solar arrays, the different antenna, batteries, and even a reaction wheel are all represented on the final model. So it not only allows us to bring people in, but it gives us an opportunity to point to all of the different technology on our satellite and then talk about how those satellites are beneficial to the warfighter. This is going. Lego making machine over there. I made this. <laughs> When my wife is done constructing these side panels for the solar array, they're going to attach along here and it's going to look like one giant solar panel. This is the solar array that Danae just finished doing. It doesn't look like it would take a while, but it does because there's all of these intricate little connections here on the, the back part of the plate. And I had to do all those because not only did I want to achieve the overall shape of the solar array, but I also want, had to be able to stick all of these plates on top that represent the solar cells. And so there's all of these little interconnected pieces in here. It's just really mind numbing. I'm impressed that Danae put up with all of that. I wanted it to attach to the actual stand. Now, in, in real life, obviously there's no stand that gets launched into the spacecraft into space. So the solar array does attach to the core of the satellite, which is right here. But for the model, for structural purposes, I wanted it to be able to attach to the stand so that way it would be sturdy when it's being you know, touched and whatnot at conferences. This is what's called an ESPA ring. It's a solid aluminum ring that's launched into space and it's got these six ports on here. Now, in some cases you could have this as a standalone satellite, but you could also use it to launch tiny little mini satellites off of. 
When you're doing research satellites, often they don't need to be very large. They just need to be able to test certain capabilities so that we can integrate them later onto bigger military satellites. So what AFRL developed is this ring structure that rides underneath a primary payload. When you're launching a big satellite into space, let's say it's this water bottle. It might be a communication satellite, it might be a GPS satellite, something like that. It's going to be big and heavy. But oftentimes the rocket still has a little bit of extra capability left over. If there's extra volume and there's extra weight that you can carry on the rocket, then you can attach some secondary payloads or some secondary satellites. We want to use taxpayer dollars as efficiently as possible. So if we can launch as many satellites into space on a single rocket as we can, because rockets are expensive, we'd like to be able to do that. Panels, whichever panel support you have. It looks like east. East. I think we did north, right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, it's on the mall. When a satellite goes into space, there's a lot of vibration. There's a lot of sound and there's a lot of just vibration that's happening from the engines moving up and down. So the whole satellite's shaking like this. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the thing's not going to fall apart, not only because we don't want our satellite to get messed up, but this is actually going to be a secondary payload. It's not going to be the only thing on the rocket. So we have to make sure the thing is super safe and it's not going to fall apart. But one of the things that we do is we want to make sure that it's going to be rigid and that when it flexes with the vibrations, that it's not going to fall apart. So we add these additional structural elements here. They look kind of random, just sticking off the satellite, but I'm building the panels right now that's going to be the phased array antenna. And then these little Lego prongs here, I'm just going to move those up and they're going to look like structural supports that we're adding to the actual satellite. Ironically, they're pretty weak in the LEGO version, so they have a huge role to play on the real satellite, but here, they're just for looks. This is detaching, and I was just following the lineup mm -hmm. of the pictures. Now I'm going to walk through and I'm going to explain what some of the elements on the satellite do as I add them to the model. So we've got the core Esper ring structure here. We still haven't added all of the phased array antenna. We're gonna do that here in a second. But first I'm gonna start with the fuel tanks. You've got four big spherical fuel tanks and they poke out the top deck just a little bit. So I've got these Lego domes here representing those. There's a set of star trackers. Star trackers are basically fancy cameras that take pictures of the sky. But because the stars are always in predictable locations, you can actually figure out how your satellite is oriented or turned in space by taking pictures of the stars and using math to figure out how it's turned. Next, I'm gonna add the low gain antenna. So what these do is they point sort of every direction in space. That's really helpful because if your satellite's spinning wildly out of control, you can still contact it because these, these antenna point different directions. And so that way, if something happens to the satellite, we can still get a hold of it to try and fix the problem. Next, I'm gonna add the high gain antenna. That's really helpful because most of the time, we actually know where the satellite is. We know how it's oriented. And so what we wanna do is we wanna be able to send more data at a higher rate. And that's what this S-band antenna is gonna allow us to do. So I'm gonna actually add it over there. There we go. Next, I'm going to add this reaction wheel. <laughs> you have four reaction wheels added to a satellite. And what those will allow you to do is you spin up the reaction wheels, and then the satellite wants to turn the other way naturally. It's something you don't see a lot here on Earth because friction kind of makes it difficult. But if I'm in the middle of space, there's no friction with the atmosphere, the ground, or anything. So if I take something and I start rotating it, my body's gonna wanna turn the other way to sort of make up for the rotation that I'm adding to the object. And we do the same thing with satellites. So inside here, there's only one that's on the outside of the satellite, but there would be a little wheel inside here that would turn, and when it starts turning that, the whole satellite would start rotating very slowly. Next, I'm gonna add the primary five pound thrusters. They're the main engines for the satellite. And so when we really wanna go somewhere, we're gonna use these guys. We call them five pound thrusters because each one produces five pounds of force. 
Next we have these thrusters. I wanna say they're half a Newton. Inside each one of these, there's a set of three tiny little thrusters. They're too small to be represented by Lego, but those allow us to actually turn the satellite as well. So we have two ways of, of turning the satellite in space. We've got the reaction control wheels, and then we've got these little thrusters here. And we've got some on the bottom too. We put thrusters all around the satellite so we can always point it in the direction we want to go. This is a tiny little radiator. The next piece I'm going to put on is called the Scion antenna. Now I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in a second. A thermal radiator on a satellite in space is going to radiate infrared light. It's light that you can't see, but that's a good way of getting rid of energy and getting rid of heat on a spacecraft. Since there's no air currents in space, which is normally how we cool things here on Earth, we can't use fans or anything else like that. So we need a special radiator to be able to reject the heat. And that's necessary because we've got fuel tanks here, we've got thrusters, we're gonna have our big primary antenna that we're gonna add here in a moment. And we've also got this Scion antenna. I'm gonna talk about this for a little bit. It's a, it's a fancy GPS antenna and sort of like what you would have on your phone or something else like that. But when you're down here on Earth, the GPS signals are really quiet. But when we're in space and we're actually broadcasting a GPS signal from the same satellite, it's really loud. And so we have to have a special antenna that can listen to those quiet GPS signals while it's broadcasting its own loud GPS signals. NASA JPL is developing that for us. And so that's one of the cool things about working for the Air Force is we have all these connections, not only to private companies, but people like the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and NASA out of California that are building this special GPS antenna for us. So each one of these, and there's a hundred of them on this model, there's about that many on the actual satellite. Every single one of these is a tiny little radio antenna and they all transmit GPS signals. But when you have this many, you can combine them in really special ways. They not only allow you to have more power when you have that many, but they can actually work together to create a specific beam. And that beam of GPS signal can be pointed anywhere on the Earth that the satellite can see. It's really fun science. It's not as fun to go through and build all of these elements. But hey, it's a lot faster than building in real life. gents, that has been the Lego build of Navigation Technology Satellite 3. NTS-3, the real satellite, will be done in a couple of years and we'll be launching it in the early 2020s. Stay tuned!